Also, if you were the owner-operator of the Decatur Ghost Tour in Decatur, Georgia, where the ghosts are real, truly. But I won't go into the tour right now. I'm not here to advertise that. We're here to discuss ghosts in general. All right, I've had people ask, what is a ghost? What are ghosts? My gosh, you know, what are these things from the other realm? Well, the thing about ghosts, before I tell you what they are, let me tell you what they are not. They are not things like the chair you're sitting in, the shirt you're wearing, all right? They're, um, they're literally, they're spirits. They're divine spirits that just got trapped in a realm, the ghost realm, if you will, on the way to the other side. They didn't quite make it, all right? Uh, let me go over the outline for today's uh, presentation. Uh, we're going to go over what are ghosts, uh, what is the difference between ghosts and spirits that have crossed over. You do need to know the difference if you're working with them. It takes practice. Uh, caveats when working with ghosts, you know, things to be aware of. Methods of protection, investigative tools, tools for clearing and cleansing, uh, forms of ghosts, what they come in, and how to clear ghosts and negative energy. I'm going to try to hold off on the questions and answers. Um, <clears throat> I want to do about 30 minutes of the presentation, the information. Then I'd like to spend the last 15 minutes. You know, anybody in the audience uh, can say, hey, I've got a problem with this. We'll critique it. I don't mind doing a quick, you know, reading what you've got in your house or, or whatever. In a discussion, uh, answer question time. You know, I got that. I'm dyslexic, guys. We'll say question answer. I don't know, some of you may have the answer before I got the question. <laughs> anyway, all right. Oh, the reason why I was passing uh, the sheet around is that. I've got a list of books. Everybody, that, you know, if I've got your email, I can send you a list of books that are really good to kind of, you know, get some education, some learning about working with ghosts and spirits and so on. So just make sure that I've got your contact information on the uh, on the sheets here. Okay. What are ghosts? The thing is, um, people forget that they are spirits. They think they're ghosts or things. No, 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 no. They are divine. And that's number one to remember when you're working with them, all right? It will help you to stay respectful of them. Um, it will keep you from being antagonistic. A lot of times people are antagonistic towards ghosts, these lower beings and so on. I guarantee like will forget like. If you're antagonistic, you're going to probably get it back from the spirit. They are at a lower vibration. If you've got the spirit that's moved on to the other side, they're at a higher vibration. They may not respond back with antagonism, but ghosts a lot of times, they're in that defensive kind of confused mode. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, uh, there's really not much difference between, okay, people ask me, well, but, okay, when I'm doing a reading for clients, I've got to know, all right, I'll be honest. Before I do the reading, I put it out. Anybody that comes through, number one, has to come through from un for unconditional love, for my client and also from the higher realms. I don't want to fool with ghosts during a reading with a client, all right? Some people say, well, how do you know the difference between a ghost and, and a spirit, that's, you know, the spirit ghost and the spirit that's moved on? It's a matter of consciousness, all right? Ghosts, um, it's really, um, there's, they're trapped in a realm that is very kind of, I don't, it's not dark. Don't think that, but it's kind of foggy. There's a confusion there and everything. Um, a spirit that has moved on, they come in, there's a certain lightness to them. Even the spirit that, uh, you know, like if I've got somebody's father, he's upset, uh, something about life, whatever. He didn't resolve some issue. But even then, if he's coming from the other side, he has been touched by that energy and been kind of shifted and transformed. There is still going to be a lightness about him despite the despair, the sadness. Ghosts, when you're working with them, there's a heaviness to them, a heavy feel. I don't care if it's a happy ghost. There's still going to be that, it's, it's almost like working with a, um, uh, maybe a young child a lot of times. Not that I'm equating them with children, but you know how five, eight years old, they don't quite have the knowledge and so on of life, whatever. Ghosts have that kind of confused feel. If I'm, work, if I'm working along, guys, truly, I don't mind taking a question or so just to make sure, because some of this can be kind of confusing, and I do want to have it, you know, kind of clear. And it can be tricky telling the difference between them, but with practice, you can feel the difference in energies, truly. 
The ghost may be happy, but there's still that feeling of confusion around them. All right? It's a facade. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, um, it's all about vibrations. It's about consciousness where the ghost is. The ghost is clueless. The spirit on the other side is um, knowledgeable. They are knowledgeable in the fact of where to go to get information, answers to their issues. The, uh, the mother that, that died, okay, um, she, something was going on with her child or something, they were killed in an accident, she was, never got it resolved. Now instead of staying around as a ghost and wondering, oh my gosh, what happened to my daughter, blah, blah, you know, because that happened in one clearing I was doing with a young father, she knew enough, her consciousness knew enough to take her to the other side where the answers are. That's why when she came back as a spirit, the confusion wasn't there. The sadness was, but she wasn't confused. The ghost, if it was, you know, the mother, she got stuck looking for the child. She doesn't get that knowledge. She doesn't get the answers or anything, and she's still seeking. I guess you could say that it's a matter of consciousness, and also spirits on the other side do. They're seeking, but it's, it's, they're seeking with a focus. Ghosts are seeking with no focus. They're clueless. And you can feel the difference in the energy when you're working with them, all right? That's why I always tell people one thing. If you think you've got a ghost in the house, you really don't want to keep it. It's not a pet. You don't want to be getting it. <laughs> I mean, you, you would be surprised, guys. I have people call about clearing. I don't even answer my phone anymore a lot because I've got so many people that call about their ghosts. And I don't mind. Leave the number. I'll try to get back with everybody in a timely manner. But the thing is... They, a lot of people feel special because they've got a ghost in their house. <laughs> truly, 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 you don't want to feel special because they'll have to get energy from somewhere. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but they're not pets, as like the dog, the cat. You don't want to keep them around because they are at that lower vibration. They will affect yours. All right? They can't affect humans. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's not wise to... Uh, you can befriend them, but I would never totally trust the ghost. They always, they're always they kind of about their own agenda. Let's put it that way, and they are confused. Don't go to them for advice. They can be looking after you in a way, but only so much. They don't have the power to really do it full time like somebody from the other side does. It's as simple as that. Okay. <clears throat> the, um, the thing about it, the caveats to remember um, when you're working with ghosts. Oh, let me ask this. Who knows the difference? Who can feel the difference between heavy energy and energy that's light? Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but there is. You can feel the difference, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it's kind of like a ghost versus somebody from the other side. Um, say you've got a friend, and there is, you know, every time you get off the phone from her or him, oh my gosh, you feel kind of depressed. You feel a little heavy. You're thinking, oh my gosh, I got drained. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, like big time. It feels very similar to the energy of an earthbound spirit. Truly. They may be entertaining, happy, uh -uh, but there's still going to be the heaviness versus when I'm working with somebody's grandmother or relative or loved one or friend from the other side, lover, you name it. There's a lightness. I don't care if they come through crying. There's a lightness. And it's very interesting about spirits from the other side. A lot of times they'll come through upset. And I'm, I, have to, I tell the client, you know, your mother's come through and she's crying. But then they clear up and they're happy and beaming. And then I'm able to tell the client. And I say, and I, I ask my guys, I was kind of confused. Well, why do they come through as one thing and then, you know, they switch to another? Because they want their, their, their loved one, that's part of the verification for the client, but then they want their loved one to know, I am basically happy. And most of the time, they are happy on the other side. That's one of the main questions I have as a medium. Is, is my mother happy? She suffered. Is my father? And I tell my clients, truly, when you're having lunch with the angels, whatever your beliefs are, you cannot help but have that lightness of spirit that the other side has. You're not being judged. There's, not, there's love and everything. I mean, it's unconditional. It's awesome. The thing is with ghosts, they're judging themselves. They're confused. All right, two, uh, there are a few caveats to remember when you're working with ghosts. Um, one is no fear. Now, this is a big, big thing right here. This is why I'm very careful. I do my carry on investigations or whatever because <clears throat> the ghost will um, pick up on the fear. 
They will feed off of it, literally. Goats don't have their, same, their own energy. And the human, when you fear something, this is one reason why ghosts will scare people. Yeah, number one, it entertains them. They like to see the human <laughs> jump. <laughs> hey, who got that? Who, you know, ah. yeah, yeah, you're gonna go, see how you guys are laughing, right? right? That's true. I laugh. But number two, though, they get energy because you can watch a human when a ghost startles them. Mm -hmm. The energy literally shoots out like this, their energy field, when that fight or flight, and the ghost is standing there and they take it. Most of them aren't doing it to be mean, but they need the energy if they're going to be active. They're in that in between, they don't have their own energy, all right? They'll use the fear against you if you're trying to clear them, or maybe if you're working with a not so nice spirit, they can turn it on you, and as you're giving out that fear, giving out your energy, you're getting weaker, they're getting stronger. So you want to go into an investigation, a clearing or whatever, as clear, as strong, as fearless as possible. I mean, truly, or don't do it. Simple as that. Once you can get to that point where, all right, knowledge with knowledge comes, um, comes understanding and, and so on. All right, no alcohol or drugs. I admit I do drink. Um, I don't have anything against it. There's nothing like a good beer after the tour. I mean, I've relaxed and a good old wine. You know, I've been hyped up for two hours, and I can get there and boo can chill out, you know. And um, the thing is, I would never do it before I did readings and investigation, clearing the tour. Not at all. I have seen it happen. I used to, when I was younger, when I went to bars, I still do kind of, but when I went to bars, I could sit there and I could watch the ghost going in and out of the human bodies getting their alcohol, getting their high, especially for, I could tell who was an alcoholic by the ones the ghosts would cling, you know, would start to clump around. Simple as that. That's why ghosts will hang around somebody. They can't get it in the spirit body anymore, but they can get it through a human's physical body. Same with your energy. I would never use alcohol, one thing, drugs, whatever, before, during it, because also it lowers your inhibitions, it lowers your barriers, your protective barriers. It's like alcohol will lower our inhibitions in the uh, physical, it will lower the drugs, alcohol, anything like that will lower your inhibitions in the energetic. It will lower your protection level. Trust me, you don't want to go there. All right? Um, another one, another caveat. Try to maintain a respectful, um, compassionate, yet firm attitude with the ghost when you're working with them. You've got to find that balance. We've already said don't be antagonistic. The higher the place you can come from working with the spirit, um, the truer it rings to them, the more they're drawn to that, the easier it is for you to work with them, the more amiable and open they are to what you are after them to do, whether it's to the other side, move on, whatever. Um, you know, and the respect part, it's like, you've got to ask yourself, um, you know, would, um, would you want somebody to, uh, you know, want to talk or work with somebody who's looking down on you, who's being disrespectful, wanting you to ent entertain whatever, do you say, um, patronizing to you? I'd turn the other way if I were the ghost. I'm not going to pull with you. Forget it. I don't have to. Ghosts don't have to talk to us. They don't have to interact. You know, we have plenty of activity on the tour. Um, I think partly I am respectful of them. It's kind of a fun thing, you know, uh, and so on. They're being entertained also. But I would never expect them to perform like, you know, do tricks and stuff. No, I'm working with a fellow spirit. I kind of consider that not so good karma, to be honest, to be taking advantage of another spirit like that anyway. Um, but anyway, just like us, ghosts do have feelings. And that's why it goes back to the main thing. Remember, first and foremost, they are spirits. They are spirits from the divine. They just didn't quite make it all the way back to, to their true home, do you see? And that's where the respect comes in. Another thing to remember, stay as non-judgmental as possible. This is so key. If you're doing a clearing, I mean, I've, I've, you know, when I'm working with people and you know, telling them what to do, and I can feel the anger and the fear around them, and, and rightfully so. I mean, it's scary to have something scratching or, or you know, throwing things at you or you know, messing with your, your living quarters and everything. And it's very easy for the human to go into an angry, defensive, um, judgmental mode, attitude with the spirit. But I guarantee that spirit is already at a lower vibration, and for you to get to that lower vibration also, it's like a slugfest. It's like two wrongs don't make a right. Do you see? And you've got to keep your vibrations up by being non-judgmental. Um, 
Okay, like an example. I was working with a client. She had something going on in the attic. I mean, it was like uh, things were getting broken. There was activity. I mean, her kids were petrified. And so she said, you know, come and help me. You know, what about the house doing? And so I went. I knew the attic, but I went through the whole house. I tell people, go through the whole house clearing. Don't just do one because there's probably more. And when I got to the attic, there was a group of children, uh, three kids and a mom, and over to the side was this really nasty ghost, all right, this entity. They were all ghosts, but the, the nasty one was over here, the older man. And I asked the family, the mother and her children, I said, why are you still here? And um, the man, and they said, he won't let us leave. And he, he really did have nasty energy. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, you went dark, and all that. I don't get into all the drama stuff. But it was like, he was like glowering at me, you know, I'm like, what do you want? Well, lady, you know. Excuse <laughs> <laughs> me. Anyway, oh, I hope Jimmy Carter wasn't right. You know, he said, thoughts are the same as do, and I'm like, I did not say what I thought. <laughs> anyway, the thing is, I could have gone into uh, judgment mode, I could have said, you, you know, you're, you're evil, what is wrong, you know, this kind of stuff. But instead, I tried to stay as non-judgmental as possible, as calm as I could, as loving and yet firm as I could, and I flat out told him, you are no longer in control. What was going on, and he, he was the stepfather. He beat them, killed the mother, I mean, it was a really bad situation, really bad energy around him, and he was still trying to control them in the ghost realm. He had no power over them, but they were still operating from the confusion of ghosts, those issues when they were alive, they were petrified of him, all right? He's still getting his feeling of power from being over them, and so I had to mediate and work and say, it's no longer that way, and if I'd gone back and forth with them, eh, it wouldn't have done any good. They'd have just flown to, gone to another part of the building, you know? I mean, they can do that. I can't hold them there. You know, I'd have to chase him around the house. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not after that. Okay, wait, he's moved to the living room. Wait, no, no, there he goes. Oh, you know, I saw him in the bathroom. All right, but the thing is, stay as non judgmental. Because by doing that, I was able to work back and forth and get the whole picture. The man had turned out the ghost that he'd been abused as a child. He was passing it on. There was a lot of anger towards himself, hatred, and so on. If I'd gone into that, we're both judging him. Do you see himself? It wouldn't have worked. So that's why I'm saying stay non-judgmental. Partly also it will keep your vibrations up. The stronger your vibrations, the more you're protected. The more effective your work is going to be. All right? <clears throat> Watch your emotional state when you're working with these other realms. Be very aware of your emotional, physical, um, your ego, because um, these, are, these create chinks in your protective armor, so to speak. Say uh, you're, you've just had a breakup with your partner, all right? uh, you know, your romantic partner. Really, uh, you're, you're very upset, you're kind of low, it's like, ah. But your friend wants you to go to the cemetery, he wants you to do some investigations. Truly, until you can get yourself at a better place, I wouldn't go. And I'll tell you why. Because it's a matter of the key fitting the lock. Wherever your vibrations are, that's what you will draw to you, and that's could be, what could very possibly stick. You could very well take a ghost home, and then they will be even influencing your behavior even more. I mean, depressed, you think depressed, bring the depression of a ghost in on your energy already depressed, you're gonna be pretty heavy. This is not to scare anybody, this is, these are just caveats so you're aware of it. All right, so you just don't go in blind and, and whatever. So be aware of the emotional, be aware of your physical state. If you're tired, you had not had much sleep, uh, you haven't been eating right, whatever, or you're kind of crapped up in life, you know, you need to do some cleansing. Once again, if you can avoid it, don't go messing with these other realms. Because the physical is what you're really, um, what everything is, you're, you, we're human. If we're in the spirit form, we don't have to worry about the energy or having to anchor to this human body right here. But me as a medium, I have to make sure that my body is in as good a shape as I can have it because it makes my reading stronger. I have something strong to anchor to, to keep the balance going. So I'm not totally out there. I'm balanced, but it can be just as bad. And it can really wear your, it does wear your body out. Working with these other realms will tire you, truly. When I'm done with the tour, I am, I'm starving. 
and I'm kind of up, but then the tiredness hits. I've done a lot of readings, bam, the tiredness hits after a while. You've got to keep your physical body in good shape. Simple as that. Or if you're going on an investigation, get some sleep, eat good, whatever, drink plenty of water. Just keep yourself in as in a, you know, finely tuned as you can. All right? <clears throat> the ego. Um, big no-no. That's another big chink in the armor. All right? You know, you've, you've seen people, and I'm not saying I haven't done it. I don't know. Um, but you, you, you see people, they, they're, oh, I can clear demons. I can clear, I can do this. I can, you know, I'm so-and-so. And I'll tell you what, they are headed for a fall because any t the ego's good. It's got its points. Every coin has a flip side, you know, yin and yang, balance, and so on. But if the ego is used too much or you're coming from the ego, I guarantee that sets up a chink in the armor, what I call a chink in the armor. It creates a weak place because you'll be judging yourself. The ghost can realize this, use it against you, and so on. And right there, your vibrations are down. It's all about keeping your vibrations up, do you see? So that's one reason also when I'm saying, if you're, if you're working with them, try to stay as loving towards yourself also, all right? When I'm doing readings, anybody, if you're doing readings, whatever, for clients, the most powerful readings are from people, a lot of times are from readers that are coming from this unconditional love mode. I don't stay in it all the time. But the thing is, when you're there, your vibrations are high. You're able to connect to the higher sources, do you say? It's as simple as that. And light attracts light. If the key fits the lock, then you're going to get attachments. If the key doesn't fit the lock, something can't stick. It's the same with diseases. Everything vibrates at a certain rate. If your vibrations are at a certain level, you'll get certain diseases. If your vibrations are up, they can't stick. Simple as that, guys. I mean, truly, it's, it's not complex, but, but it is hard sometimes to remember that, to practice that. Everybody pretty much understands so far. Uh, I just want to make sure we're all on the same uh, uh, <coughs> methods of protection. Oh, let me back up. The three forms that you can find ghosts in, all right, all right, are the orb form. I'm going to pass some uh, pictures around here. The orb form. Uh, you've got the ectoplasmic mist form. The orb form is the most common form that ghosts can exist in. All right? That's the easiest form. That's literally what they are. Angels are that. They're balls of energy. It's all energy. That's why if you want to be a millionaire in this life, you can be a millionaire because it's all about energy, manipulating energy. Everything is energy. That's surreal. Angels are energy. They come in the angelic form. They can change in and be in any form. You know that. But we can identify with that. We feel comfortable with that, do you say? The second form, though, for ghosts would be the actual mist form. It's literally like a fog. You can catch it on your cameras. Uh, it can be bluish gray, greenish, yellow. It doesn't matter. But literally, that's a ghost just, you know, like a mist. It could be a red mist. It doesn't matter. The third form is the apparitional. This is where they, the, uh, the spirit appears. In the, they're in the ghost form, but they appear like they did in life down to the clothes. Um, two things you can tell from a ghost by their, by their clothes, by the way. If you see the apparitional form, you can tell their uh, status in life. Like on the tour, we've got uh, one of the ghosts is from a very wealthy family with a gorgeous gown, beautiful. Most of the women of the village couldn't have afforded a gown like that. So you can tell, status in life, maybe it wasn't, she was a wife of a wealthy merchant, by the way, had the money. The second thing you can tell from a ghost by the costume, when you see the apparition, is their time period a lot of times, all right? By the way, I bet you guys didn't even know it. There, oh, you do know this. There are a lot of ghosts that are clueless that they're dead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the thing is, it's really not a matter of them being, <clears throat> well, they are clueless, and it's not a matter of them not knowing they're dead so much as it's a matter of them refusing to admit they died. That's what it is. First off, if you're doing a clearing and you're really into the mediumship and everything, you can clear without doing it. All right? You can clear. I'm not going to make it harder. You know, it's not that hard. But the thing is, they don't know. They, they're, they're having to stay alive for a reason. Okay? So they think they're alive. <coughs> Some of the ghosts, they know they're dead. They, yep, okay, I'm dead. But I'm not going on. i got to get this cleared up. All right? So... There are two different types right there as far as those that know, those that are refusing to admit it. The thing is, methods of protection. 
number one for me, um, aside from keeping my vibrations up, uh, staying in it as, uh, as loving, compassionate, but firm at mode, is I call on my angels and guides. I don't do my readings. With, I'm not even doing the readings. My, I'm channeling. My guides and angels and my clients' guides and angels are doing the reading. I am a mere channel. That's it. So when I'm doing investigations, especially heavy investigations, like uh, somebody wanted me to, to investigate a mental, uh, mental play, uh, hospital. It was fine. I mean, you know, there was some stuff there. But I wouldn't have gone in without my beloved Archangel Michael. Now, it's interesting because people say, well, I've had people say, or they don't say it, but they're thinking, hmm, if Archangel Michael's over there, how can he be over there? How can he be over there? So who's got a monopoly? Or what? No, 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 no. Who doesn't have a monopoly? Because when a spirit is in the spirit form, they, you can bilocate, you can split up into splinters. This is why Buddha, Christ, any of the other ascended masters can be anywhere at any time with any number of people. It's the nature of energy. And then they come back together. I can call on Michael. You can call on Michael. I don't care who you call on, but that is one of the greatest protections, your ascended guides and masters. You have your own team, by the way, of spirit guides and angels that is yours exclusively. I can't call on them unless you give them permission to work with me. And that's how I work in a reading. Otherwise, I don't see your loved ones, and I don't see your, uh, your team members, so to speak. Um, some of the ascended masters to, uh, that I use are uh, the Christ, I use Buddha, Mother Mary, Kuan Yin, and you'll notice I've had people use Sekhmet, the Egyptian goddess of protection and so on. It doesn't matter. Whatever your belief is, go to that. Great protector. And when you think about it, you're working in a different realm, but that is their realm, the energetic realm. Do you see the spirit realm, whether it's the ghost, other side, whatever. So call on those that are involved in it. We're in the human realm. I can only go so far. Stones, very good allies right there. Uh, first and foremost, my favorite, hands down, is black tourmaline. I absolutely love black tourmaline. I always, usually I wear a pendant. I got some on me when I'm doing the tour. It helps me ground. It's a very protective stone, very loving. Um, two or three others are labradorite. Uh, these are my other favorites, amethyst and jet. I've also heard of people using spirit quartz um, and shaman stones that you get out west. I mean, I've got some shaman stones. There are iron concretion, sandstone interior, very powerful for meditation. But stones are a really good ally. Um, also, the cloak of protection. I've, I've had people use this. I don't use it. I use the other. I, I uh, literally surround myself in like a sphere or... Um, a cocoon of white light. That's my method. Some people will put the cloak on. Literally, it, it's got the hood, the cloak, and they'll surround it around their energy. It can be purple, blue, pink. It doesn't matter. It's your cloak, not booze. But I usually use the cocoon. I mean, that's me. I feel very safe, I guess. You know, maybe I'm in, I don't know, but I'm in this little egg, you know, so to speak. It protects my energy. I always say, let nothing through it that what is for booze best and highest good. Therefore, something may not be what appears to me for my best and highest good, but that's okay. It's something Buddha needs to learn from. But that's another very, very powerful protection. All right. Uh, coming from a place of unconditional love and non-judgment. People do not realize how powerful that is. Truly. And I'm, I'm not going to say I've always been at this place, and I don't even stay here a lot. When I'm doing readings or working with the metaphysical, yes. Boo out in traffic, you wouldn't recognize boo, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love to drive. Why can't you people love to drive for God's sake? Come over you know, I mean, I don't know, that is, which is a real boo. I don't know. I'm still working on that, guys, like everybody else. Okay. <laughs> but unconditional love and that non judgment, I can feel a difference when I'm in it. When I'm doing readings, I'm not saying anything, but when I'm in it, by God, I'm on. When I'm not, by God, I'm off. <laughs> I'll be honest, there are those off days. Um, but when you're working with ghosts, they resonate to that energy. They are drawn to it. Whether they want to realize it, admit it or whatever, okay, or admit it or whatever, the thing is, they're, they're looking for something. There's that peace. There's that love. There's something there, and they'll, they'll respond back to you when you're in that mode. Now, it doesn't mean not be firm with them, all right? The thing is, you will tell them, 
you've got to move on. I don't care if it's crossed to the other side, or you will move on to another place, but you will move on. Because they are working in your realm. The human realm, the earthly realm, is your domain. So many people do not realize that. And I guarantee, sometimes you run into a really recalcitrant, a stubborn spirit. Most of them, though, they're going to clear if you're firm enough. It's as simple as that. I'm not saying there won't be some that are, you know, you got a little trouble, you might have to go back two or three times, whatever. But it's your realm, you claim it. Don't be fearful. You're very powerful. They have no power except what you give them. Do you understand? Through that energy that you might be giving them. Poltergeist. What's it there? A poltergeist? Eh. That's usually a human putting out the energy from something, whatever, causing things to happen. Not a real ghost. I've never run into a poltergeist that was a real ghost. And uh, I don't know, 20 years of doing this. All right? I'm not going to say it wouldn't happen. But usually it goes back to the person, the client, whoever. You can get the origin right there. All right? Um, <clears throat> investigative tools. Voice recorders for recording EVPs. Electronic voice phenomena, if you will. Uh, thermometers. Sensing and recording sudden temperature drops. And in, a, in the vicinity of a ghost, you will have a drop of 10, uh, 20 degrees drop because ghosts are taking the energy from that spot of air. They're taking it from you. This is why I tell people don't keep ghosts in the house. They'll take energy from anything organic, you, your animals, trees, whatever, the very air around you. They'll take, anything, they'll take it from inorganic, your electronics. I've seen them fry. Uh, I had a friend. They fried her hard drive she just got. It was still in the box. And one knocked it off the sofa and it was fried, ruined. So don't, that's, that's the thing about the energy issues there. Uh, dowsing rods. These are very simple, guys. We use them on the tour, all right? Dowsing rods have been used for centuries. They use them on investigations. You can use copper, brass, it doesn't matter. Uh, we, on the tour, and I'll be honest, all right? Oh, who knows what dowsing rods are? There's nothing magical about them. They're working out the electromagnetic energy of your body, bypassing the conscious, tuning the subconscious mind into what the electromagnetic energy of whatever you're focusing on, getting you answers. If you don't have a medium along, you can use the dowsing rods. And by the way, folks, I'm going to let you in on a secret. <laughs> the, um, these dowsing rods are from the tour, the Cater Ghost Tour. They are coat hangers. Oh. Truly, they don't believe me. Look at this. They are metal coat hangers. I'll even tell you how I made them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love Business, we went to our friendly neighborhood dry cleaners. You want to make your own 12 inches across, and the part that goes like this, I made that six inches. A dowsing rod. They work awesome. In fact, I love them so much. This is my personal pair of coat hangers right here. <laughs> All right, about to finish up here so I can take some questions. Um, still cameras and video cameras. Truly, we've got some awesome shots with video cameras on the tour where you can literally see the pulse. I mean, the, the, the orb pulsing, all right? Mm -hmm. Somebody asked me earlier before I got started, they said, well, if I'm taking pictures, how do I know where to shoot to get a shot of a ghost? It is so simple, folks, truly. And you know it is. I know you, man. Boy, you're like, yeah, it really is. I've gotten bundles of shots and so on. And you have. You really haven't, have you? <laughs> Whoops, wrong one to get that audience participation from. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I know her. I'm just kidding you. Anyway, the thing is, it's so simple on knowing where to shoot to get some shots. All right? All right, say you're in a store. Uh, you're waiting in line, and you feel somebody staring at you. All right? So you look over, and, you know, in, in another line is another lady. She's living. She's waiting to go through the line, and she's just entertaining herself, you know, just kind of watching everybody, you know, this kind of thing. But what is going on, unbeknownst to her and you, her energy as she focuses it is shooting out and kind of touching your energy field. If you're alive, you've got an energy field, an aura. Mm -hmm. Her energy is going into yours a little bit and pulling on it. You turn and look. Sure enough, she's looking at you. Guys, it is the same thing when a ghost is watching you, and they do watch the living. They wouldn't be in the ghost realm if they didn't want to be, rejoin the human realm. They watch humans. So when you feel that pull, turn and take the shot. Another thing, people don't realize this. I've had clients over and over. My daddy missed my wedding. That's my one big regret. 
my daddy died of cancer before he could, you know, before I got married to see me, to walk me down the aisle. And I tell him, no, he didn't. I can describe the wedding because I've got the father there telling me about the wedding. He was there. They're going to be at your reunions, your holidays, uh, your, you know, uh, weddings, whatever, your good times, truly. They will be at their funeral. I think not as ghosts, not as ghosts usually. They, they're coming from the other side. But it's their going home party. They want to share it with their loved ones. All right? At your reunions and everything, take some shots. Just see who you pick up. At my nephew's wedding a year ago, there was my father. I could see him standing behind my nephew. My nephew's standing there with his young bride. They're, you know, just getting married. And my, my father's with his hand, big hand. You've done good, buddy. You've done good. So I think it was Beth or somebody took a shot. And there was my father, the orb, right there. They are going to be there. They'll be there at the sad times, too, people. Make them feel welcome. They want to comfort you. All right? Most of the time, they're not coming as ghosts. Um, <clears throat> how much time do we have, Beth? I want to, because I, I mean, I don't, I mean, it's, I'm about done, but I want to make sure I get, you know, have everybody with their questions and answers. So what else? Just about eight minutes. Eight minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, clearing. There's nothing to do in a clearing. All right. Uh, different tools that you can use, uh, employing the white light when you're going through an area, um, <coughs> positive, beautiful thoughts. A lot of times you can shift the energy by your own, and it's like this light kind of grows, do you see? And the dark recedes. I like the dark too. We need the balance. But anyway, sea salt is a very good one. They've used it for thousands of years. I know, I like the dark. There's a great book by Barbara Taylor Brown, uh, Learn to Walk in the Dark. Check it out. There's nothing to be scared of the dark, all right? And Al told me about that one day, but that's another, uh, another subject. <laughs> anyway, other tools to use while you're doing a clearing. Bells are good, sage, candles, incense, essential oils, such as lavender, rose. Any of these are good, very good tools to use. Uh, singing bowls are good. They shift the vibrations. Shift the vibrations, you shift the energy, simple as that. Prayer is a good one. Uh, clearing out clutter right there. You think negative energy? Check around for some clutter because energy does get stuck. It's all the time wanting to move and shift and change. If it can't, you've got stagnant pools of energy there. All right, on to the clearing. When you're doing a clearing, <clears throat> one of, this is how I work. You can do it however. Um, when I go in, first off, I will go through the premises and you, I'll be honest, most of the time, you don't even really need to know who you're working with. I, as a medium, go in, yes, I can say you've got a woman, yes, uh, and the mother died in an accident, looking for some blah, blah, blah. You really do not have to know that. Most of the time, you don't. Unless you're doing a, something heavy duty is going on, you don't. You go in with the right attitude, all right? Go to the room, see. You could sit in one room. I guarantee the ghost is probably going to come in to check you out, see what's going on. Yeah, we've got a strange human in here. What are you doing? Entertainment, whatever. Calling your guides and angels to be with you, to protect you. All right, very easy. Um, and what I do is, well, I had a client, to give you an idea of how easy this is, I had a client. She said, my house won't sell. I mean, it had been, you know, beautiful. I mean, beautiful house, beautiful house. Should have been surprised. Everything was right. I said, so when I went in, now she didn't really need to know this information, all right, but it's what I picked up. I said, you've got a ghost. I'm getting that it's your mother-in-law. She was getting a divorce. Mother-in-law wanted her to keep married, be, stay married to her son, yeah. so she could keep looking after her son. Mama would moved on. Somebody had to look after that, um, that man, you know, that not-so-nice husband. So the thing is, when I told her that, all she did, she did her protection, surrounded herself with white light, called in her guides and angels to help, and then she went through the house. <laughs> I probably, I wouldn't have done, you know, she, it worked. It worked for, you must leave. I mean, she told me literally, she was on the phone telling me, I screamed, you must leave. You, I mean, going through the house, room for room, doing this with her candle. <laughs> and, and I could tell the energy. I knew the ghost had left. I mean, I was, I was, it was, I, I cracked up. But within two weeks, bam, the house was sold. The point is, you don't have to be a medium to do a clearing. The main things you have to look for or be aware of is where you're at 
energetically, emotionally, where your physical body is, your intention, and so on. And, and those are the most important things and to call on the help of these higher beings that work on that side, do you see? It's not a big deal to clear it. It's the intent, the firmness, the compassion, love, and so on. I go through the house after I've done the spirit, after I've crossed the mountain. You don't have to see where the light is. Give them the choice. You either have to move on because you're doing so-and-so, whatever's coming to you, say it. You've got to move on somewhere else or you can cross over. And then you tell them, you'll find the answers, you'll find the love. Everything you're seeking is on the other side. Look for the light. Now, I can see it, and you probably could, could do if you practice enough, but you don't have to be able to see it. Point, and I guarantee, wherever you point, you're being drawn as a spirit to where the light is. Point to it. Go into the light. Do you see the angels? And they may be kind of clueless. What? These be beautiful, and just explain. It may take you 10, 15 minutes. But there's a light waiting. Feel the love. Feel the love. Boom. But they have to go, do you see? That's the thing. They've got to go. It's their choice. You can't force them to go across. But you can force them into the position, into the choices of going or crossing over. Simple as that. Then I will work through the house um, with some sage. This is how I do it. I put it in my abalone shell. You can do a sage stick. It doesn't matter. Um, and I work from room to room, top to bottom. I don't really think it really matters as long as you cover all the areas. I work around the corners of the room and then move on to another area. Pray, and I, I pray, I, I bring in the angels, please lighten this space, bring in the love. And I can feel the light literally spreading. You can tell when the clearing has happened a lot of times because it feels lighter. It's not your imagination when the whole room looks brighter. It literally does because the energy's been shifted. Okay, questions and answers. Um, yes? Okay, so when you have the spirit, you get in the spirit of the choice to move on. I, I heard a spirit on an echo box saying, we're stuck, please help us, we're stuck. Mm -hmm. and is all that's necessary is to say, go to the light. And that's it. Okay, what, what, what I would do in that, what I would do in that situation, you've got a spirit being stuck. Since you heard it, I would be asking, why do you feel you're stuck? Now, a lot of times, you can open up and just say, well, why is this spirit stuck? And sometimes your spirit guides are coming out, they're stuck because of so-and-so. Whatever, you want to just kind of blank it and say, you're stuck because you're in the ghost realm, you were dead. Sometimes I've literally told them flat out, you were dead. I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm very honest with spirits, I'm not brutal, but sometimes you have to kind of push it. And the thing is, I will say, look for the light. There's where your answers are. I don't have the answers, but I know the answers are waiting. Go to the angels cross like this. You're not, tell them you're not, they're not stuck. Why don't they know that? Huh? Why don't they know that? Why don't, Why don't they, they know, know that? Yeah. Because they're not even admitting they're dead. A lot of times they don't even know they're dead. They're refusing to admit it. Like um, the mother in the memory garden, one of the ghosts on the tour, um, <clears throat> She's not moving on because her young son was lost at sea. She never got closure, and there's also guilt. Mm -hmm. And so to her, she died actually an elderly lady. But when she came, but she's like, oh my gosh, my son, I'm, I'm letting him down. I can't leave. I can't leave. He's coming back. He's coming back. Mama's got to stay alive. So she did what goes through everywhere. She recreated the whole situation, recreated the time. She's in a time warp. She sees uh, 1913 Decatur, not the people standing out there as I'm giving, telling about her. And she's waiting because she's got to stay alive. Mama's not going to let my, I'm not going to let, Mama's not going to let her boy down again. Those are the issues right there. They're stuck. They, a lot of times they don't even know why they're stuck. They just, they just know, truly, when I've been in the ghost realm, I don't go there often. I mean, I, why? You know, it's kind of, but, but the thing is, literally, it's a very gray area. It's kind of like a fog is going around. There's, there's, it's like this confusion, and it's up to you to kind of be the firm one and say, you are not stuck. You have a choice. You are divine. You have the choice to move on. Especially this is what you want to tell them. Huh? Especially if they're asking you, help me, I don't want to be stuck. If they're asking you that. And then ask them what is going on. Ask them, or see if you can pick it up. Because there's an issue unresolved, and a lot of times ghosts are not me. That's a facade. They're using it to protect themselves or get your attention, but underneath there's that spirit trying to find the peace. Somebody help me find that peace that eluded me in life, help me find it in death. 
Don't let it fool you about this stubbornness and everything. You be firm. You say the answers are over there. This is where you must go or you move on. But otherwise, I cannot help you. This is it. And you call in the angels to take them. Michael's very good. Do you see? Call in, call in these higher beings. Who's, does anybody else have a question? Um, yes. On, on, your, on your ghost tour, when you see the lady from 1913 on your ghost tour, why do you not cross her over? She's she's clueless, and that's an interesting question. Because, and I probably could, you know. And um, in fact, I crossed one of my ghosts about two weeks ago, and I, it was like, you know, somebody said, "You can cross one of your guys." You know, I said, "Well, I'm sure there are plenty of others to take me in place." You know. But my guys told me this, the soldier was ready to cross. I, I normally don't do it on the tour, but I did it that night. And um, the thing is, um, my guides tell me that because I feel guilty, all right, my guys tell me that there are certain spirits that do volunteer to stay there with me with the tour or trying to educate humans that ghosts are not things. They are, they were human at one time, they are divine spirits. And so many people are clueless about that. You see, they treat them like things or pets or whatever, and they're <coughs> not. They're spirits, simple as that. So I could clear her, but she is on some higher level not ready to be cleared, and I won't force, I'm not going to, I can't force a spirit like that. I would never, that's very disrespectful, but that was a good question. People will ask me, can you clear her? You know, they start crying along with her, and I say, no, it's not time yet. My guys will let me know when it's time, then they'll help me. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, you've been so patient. Yes. Yeah, well, I was living in a house that was built in 1889, and when I moved into the house, I was told that it was like a uh, mortuary or something. When that it was a what now? A funeral home? Yeah. Yeah. Dead bodies had been in that house. Uh huh. And it was an upstairs that was an attic. That was in the Can everybody hear I me? Mean, okay. She, there, there was. Uh, she's been living in an 18 something. It was 1889. The house was built in the 1889. The house, and it was a mortuary. All right. Funeral home. Every part in the house seemed good until I went upstairs. Uh huh. And at night, I go up there, and it was like just cold. It was really cold. Yeah, it was really cold. And because like, there were so it, many it, taking it, the energy it, out of the air, air it, is, it, the energy it, is heat. And I finally, and I thought, I gotta do something. I'm not gonna not use this part of the house. Uh huh. Because it was my sanctuary. I sewed up there. I did the computers. I, it was my space. Well, what, I, what I'm getting also, though, I know where this is headed, but what I'm getting also is the upstairs part, a portal had been created. Now, I know I'm going into another area, but a portal is a doorway between the realms. This is what ghosts use. Other things will use these portals to travel between the realms. There are thousands of realms of existence out there. We're only one. Ghost realm is another. The other side is one. And what happened is a portal was created by that constant death energy, constant yeah. death energy, that great da, 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 like that. And literally a portal, a doorway was created. Mm -hmm. And you could keep clearing that thing, but unless you close the portal, they're going to keep right on coming through. I did you see? Because of the, the energy drawing them, the energy, the energy. It would take quite a powerful um, clearing, if you will, to shut it down and clear all the ghosts that were coming through because like attracts mm -hmm. like. They're drawn in by like energy. They don't even belong in the house, that haunted house a lot of times. But like attracts like. Vibrations, energy. The only thing say, I can say is I just, I finally asked, like, I have my own conversation. Right. I said, look, this is my house. You need to go or you need to leave me alone. And they left. I'm going to use this part of the house. And they left. And they left. Thank you. Did you hear what you said? Yeah. She, she was firm. She finally got to that point. I, it's like you get to that point of, well, damn nation, damn if I do, damn if I don't. Yeah. I can't use half this house I'm paying for. <laughs> My gosh. So, really, I'm tired of being fearful. I mean, she got to the point where either or, I'll take the either, you got to get gone, and right there, that was a firmness. But I guarantee you didn't do it. You were, you were pretty much, you were very understanding though, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Very. I mean, yeah. I... I I know you're a compassionate person anyway, but I'm just saying, you didn't go up there like with a shotgun. Oh, yeah. you know, I'm all like, what are you going to do? And they'd be standing there laughing, shoot me, shoot me, you know. That kind of thing. <laughs> no, but she was firm, and that made the difference right there. The intent, and also what my guides are telling me even now, that intent is what really helps ghosts believe you and know you ring true. They trust you. When you've got that firm intent, there's got to be something to this human. Yes, maybe I need to trust them. 
see what they're saying, follow it and stuff. When you're kind of wobbly, fearful, then the ghost is like, you know, kind of fearful also, do you see? So you did have the intent, you'd finally gotten to the point, that's it. And they believed you. They believed me. They knew you rang true then. Then I could be up there and do whatever Then you also, you didn't have a lesson to learn anymore that they were trying to help you learn about being fearless and trusting, do you see? Once you learned that lesson, guys, let's move on. Our work is done. Like that. Anybody else have another question? I don't know how much time we've got. But suicide and he burned the house down he, they died in the house and they still were not able to move on because the house was still around them they weren't even aware they were dead so when a ghost doesn't know they're dead or refusing to admit they're die, they died they're literally seeing their former surroundings the surroundings they were in the dimension they were in when it happened they were, they were, and there was a confusion of ghosts guys I've got to let you go there's yeah. something like that. <laughs> Thank you so much.